Hi, fifth grade. It's Mrs. Anglane. Um, tonight's video is going to be on the relationships between factors with having and doubling and tripling and thirding. And so, um, chances are you probably haven't thought about these relationships, but after today's lesson, um, hopefully you'll have a little bit better understanding and it um, will be a little bit easier for you to produce factors. Okay, so let's get started and let's take a look at what I, what I mean. Please have out your composition book and make sure and uh, set up tonight's video notes. Okay, so we're first going to talk about having and doubling. Okay, so my question to you is, do you agree that the factor pairs 6 times 4 equals the same amount as 3 times 8? Okay, so um, hopefully you say yes. But if not, I want you to think about this. Uh, I don't want that. I want the bananas. Okay. So, if I have these bananas, okay, and let's say that I ask you how many bananas there were there. Okay, we've been doing some quick images in class, right? Some of you would see that there are six, one, two, three, four, five, six, in each column and there's one, two, three, four across the top. So to find out how many bananas that there are, you would tell me that I saw six times four, which is 24. And I would say that's right. But there's also people out there that would see this. And my question to you is, is that three groups of eight? And the answer is yes. So 6 times 4 does equal 3 times 8. It's, it's kind of like how you see an array. Okay. Now, what is the relationship of what we did to 6 times 4? Do you see a pattern about what happened? How did we go from 6 to, to 3? And how did we go from 4 to 8? Pause the video if you need some think time because I'm about to give you the answer. Did anybody out there say that this is half or divided by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then did anybody say that this one, 4 to 8, was times 2? Okay, so look at that again. So 6, when we, when we went from 6 to 3, we divided that factor by 2. And to keep it kind of even, to keep it balanced, when we divided that by 2, we doubled or we multiplied 4 times 2. So you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, does that work for everything? Well, I have some questions for you to think about. And I want you to see if this will always work. Okay? First question I have for you is 8 times 6. We know that that's 48, right? I want you to think about it and pause the video if you need to. 5, 8 times 6 is equal to 16 times something. I want you to take a look at possibly... Possibly, what did I do to 8 to get to 16? How did I go from 8 to 16? Hopefully you're saying, huh, that's doubled. So in order to keep the problem the same, what would I have to do to 6 to keep that equation balanced? And hopefully you're saying, oh, I would need to divide by 2. And so this answer must be 3. So, does 8 times 6 equal 16 times 3? And the answer is yes. Okay. Let's take a look at B. 50 times 8. This is my ultimate favorite, y'all. If you're multiplying anything times 5, 5, 50, 500, what do I like to do? And we've already talked about this, haven't we? We've already talked about if you find 10 groups, what else do you know? Okay, so if I know 50 times 8, hopefully you know that, but what if you don't? What did I do from 4, 8 to get to 4? What did I do there? Didn't I divide it by 2? Okay. So if I divided that by 2, what would I have to do to 50 to get this number? If I have to keep it balanced, look up here if you need to. Ah, wouldn't I have to double that, right? I'd have to double it. See how that's 100? If this is 400, this is also 400, isn't it? Look at this. Could I keep it going? 
Could I keep the pattern going? What if I didn't know 100 times 4? Could I double 100 and half 4? Think about that. I doubled 100, and to keep it even, I took half of 4. Do these all say the same thing? Uh, let's see if we can go the other way. I bet you didn't think about this. How many out there would have guessed that 25 times 16 equals 200? 400. I don't even know if I would have known that. But what did I do over here? How did I know that? I took half of 50 and I doubled 8. Half of 50 and I doubled 8. Okay, let's do the next one that I have. How about this one? Oh, sorry, here. I can keep that layer turned on. Sorry. What about this one? 12 times 8. How did I go from 12 to 24? I doubled it, so what do I have to do to 8? I have to not double it. Sorry, guys. Don't I have to take half of it? Sorry. Okay. What about the next one? What did I do? I doubled it. So what do I have to do with four? Take half of it. That's right. Could I have kept on going over here? What if I took half of 12? What would the other one be? 16. Who knew that 6 times 16 was 96? Could I do it again? Could I do it again? Could I take half of 6 and double 16. Oh, you know what? I can do that one in my head. I can do 32 times 3 in my head. 30 groups of 3 is 90. 3 groups of 2 is 6. 96. Aren't these all equal to 96? Pretty cool, isn't it? Alright, and let's turn on that last layer. Let's see what we get for D. 3 times 20. 3 times 20. Hopefully we all know it's 60, right? Okay, so what if I want this missing factor? What did I do to go from 3 to 6? Hopefully you said doubled it. So if I doubled that factor, what do I have to do with this factor? Take half of it. So how did I go from 6 to 12? I doubled it. So if I doubled that one, what do I have to do this one? I have to take half of it. Right? Now, can I double 12? I can't take half of 5, though, can I? So, no, nah, I probably need to stop there. Okay. So, you're thinking, hmm, that, ha ha that works with having and doubling. Does it work with tripling and thirding? So, if it worked, if I took half of one number and tri uh, doubled the other number, it worked. Do you think it works with tripling and thirding? So what I mean by this is, if I have 9 times 7, right, we, we never know what 9 times 7 is, do we? Okay, the 9s, the 7s, aren't they the death of you? Okay, so could we make the problem easier? Could I take and take a third of 9? Do you know what that means? It means to divide by 3. If I take 9 divided by 3 to get 3, right, 9 divided by 3, so right here, Oh, okay, let me turn that layer on. There we go. If I took 9 and divided by 3, what would I have to do to keep that equation equal? I would have to multiply this by 3, wouldn't I? So, mm, I don't know, some of you might not know what 7 times 3 is, but I don't know about you, but 3 times 21 is a lot easier for me to do. 3 times 20, 3 times 1, right? 63, okay? Let's take a picture, of, uh, take a look at a picture of this. T take a look at an array. Okay, so most of you, if I gave you, this is a quick image, you'd probably see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 going down and 7 across, right? And so you'd say mm, 9 times 7 is 63. Well, could it also be that this is 3 groups of 21? Okay, so it's just, it's grouping things together differently so that, so that you can maybe see it a little bit easier. Okay, now. Why am I telling you this? Why am I talking to you about why this is a, a good strategy? 
I'll tell you why. This came about quite accidentally, boys and girls. When I was in tutor, a tutoring session, um, it was probably, no, not last year, but the year before. And we were trying to find factors of, I think, like, a really crazy, like, large number of, like, 240. And I had given the kids, like, up at the whiteboard, like, I said, okay, guys, try to find all the factors of 240. And um, so they could say 1 times 240, right? And so somebody had written down, well, Mrs. Anglade, I saw 2 times 120. And then somebody else came along and said, well, I see 4 times um, 60. And then, quite by accident, they saw that pattern. They were like, wait a minute. Hey, wait. I doubled this and I took half of this. I doubled this and took half of this. And so, you know what they did? They just continued the pattern. So they said, okay, wait. If I double this and take half of this, wow, that still equals 240. And they said, okay, wait. If I double this and take half of this. Oh my goodness, who knew 16 times 15 equal 240? I didn't. Hmm. Now, here's the problem. I can't take half of this anymore, right? 15. Okay, so now, so the having and doubling we're finished with, now what are we going to try? We're going to try to do the tripling and 30. Okay, so let's watch how that works. Can 3, can I, is, does 3 go into 240? I think so. 3 goes into 240 80 times. Hmm. Wait a minute. Can I start taking half of 80? Okay, let's do having and doubling. So let's double, sit, double 3 to get 6, and let's take half of 80. Double 6, half of 40. Double 12, half of 20. Double 24, half of 10. Hmm. Okay, now I'm back to 5. I can't take half of it. So you kind of, whenever you get to like a kind of a roadblock is going to be whenever you get to a number you can't take half of. So, boys and girls, if I had a guess, I have factors of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 15, 16, 16, where's my next one? I don't know. 24 probably. 48, oh, no, 30, 40, oh, 20 in there somewhere. 40, 48, did I say 30? I don't know, 60. Do you see all the multiples or the factors of 240? The kids in tutoring just went crazy when they saw that. They were like, oh my gosh. So it'll work with any number. So we'll try those more in class when we, when we get back together. But I wanted you to see that that having and doubling and the thirding or trying the factor of three, I could have actually, here's what I've also could have done. Could I, could have, could I have thirded 30? Could I have taken one third of 30 and tripled eight? Okay, so I could have done that too, and then I could have started having and doubling. I, I did get that one down here eventually, but you could have done lots of different things with that one. So anyway, we'll talk more about it tomorrow. I just wanted to show you those really cool relationships because so many times we don't think about that, and um, they're there. We just we don't realize that we use them. Okay, um, so I'm finished for today. Have a good one, guys. Bye.